All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. All right, I'm gonna teach you guys today how to put an air, an intake air temp on a custom intake. Um, a lot of people just let it hang, but that's not the right way to do it. You always, the best way to get a cartoon is to get the real air intake temp. If you're just getting, you know, if you're just putting this sensor all the way, you know, you extend it, you put it in the front of the car, the engine thinks it's taking in, let's just say, 60 degree air temps, but realistically, it's taking like 80 degrees maybe or something, and believe it or not, that does throw off your tune, and it's it's not the way to do it. So, I'm going to teach you guys how to put an air intake temperature sensor, sensor in a custom pipe or custom intake that you have. So, this is my 4-inch intake. Um, like I said, it's a time attack car, so some people are like, oh, V-stack it and stuff like that. Nope, I'm planning to run a filter. As you can see, I got a pretty big filter on there. Um, I want I want immediate response, so I don't want to do like a traditional cold air. I don't want to do added a headlight because I think a filter added headlight would look ridiculous. And I'm just not going to v, uh, with a V stack. So this is the route I'm going, and I'm just you know going to show you guys how to do this. If you guys don't know, this is it. Some of you guys may know how to do this already, but we're going to jump right into it. So what you're going to want is some rubber hose, okay? And then you want your air intake temp sensor. And then you need a drill and a drill bit. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to measure. Okay, you want to measure the size, the outer diameter of the air intake temp sensor. So you measure it. When you get your measurement, you basically have to look for holes with an inner, inner diameter. Okay, so here's my holes right here with the inner diameter and you double check and it should be a little see it's a little smaller and that's what you want so basically if it's a little smaller you basically just drill look for a drill bit um, I'll show you in the next clip but you find a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the outer diameter of this hose and what you do is you'll drill I'll show you drilling you drill it you put this in and then you press, you might need a little bit of lubrication, and then you press the sensor into the pipe. And I'm going to get that done, and I'm going to show you guys what that actually looks like, alright? So I'll be right back. Alright guys, so step one, you're going to get your intake into the device. Obviously, you're going to mark where you want to uh, drill. So you do that, well this technically will be step one. You'll mock up your intake, and you'll see exactly where you want. My plug is here, so I marked it exactly where I wanted it. Um, ignore this line. This line is because I'm gonna put heat reflective tape on this, and I, you know, I just have it marked to how far I'm gonna do it. So basically, once you have it marked, you uh, put a little tap into it so you can, you know, your your drill bit doesn't walk. Um, remember, you want to find the outer diameter, a drill bit with the same outer diameter of your uh, well, like I said, slightly smaller actually by, you know, not much, just a little smaller, not. You know, because if it's too tight, then it's gonna be a pain about to get it in and out. But you're gonna go just slightly smaller so you can be able to press this in. So I'm gonna just look for a drill bit and I'm gonna drill it and I'm gonna show you the hole, all right? I'm gonna show you what it should look like. All right, guys, so I actually opted with a slightly softer rubber. I have a whole bunch of holes in so I found something slightly softer rubber, but it's a smaller outer diameter, but and the inner diameter is slightly smaller than the inner di uh, the outer diameter of my sensor. So that means I didn't have to drill a super big hole. The hole is still a little too small, but as you guys see, that's how the hole should look. Make sure you deburr the outside slightly, and especially in the inside. So this is still not deburred, but you don't want a piece of metal flying, flying into your, like into your throttle body, and then you know fuck up your cylinder walls. So the next step would be to just drill slightly, drill this out enough that you can slide this in with some force. Not too much for like not too much force, not not too little bit force. You don't want it to just fall through, but you want it that it's just snug. That way, since the inner diameter is slightly smaller than the sensor, when you put the sensor in, it's gonna spread it open, push against the walls of the intake, and that's what's gonna hold it in place. This works for all motor. It works for boost setups. Uh, for a boosted setup, you're gonna want it to be a slightly taller, uh, a, a slightly tighter tolerance, as tight as you possibly can. Use a little bit of lubricant if you need to to get it through, but um, the tighter, technically, the better for boost. Obviously, it will reduce a uh, boost, uh, boost leak and all that kind of stuff. So, but for all motor, that tolerance is not as important. 
but you know just try to get as as tight as you can so i'm gonna get this in i might have to drill this out just a little bit more um and i'm gonna get this in and show you what it should look like when you put it in all right guys so all right there it is the rubber piece is um the rubber hose is in the pipe as you can see so the the length of this hose should be the length so you see the the teeth on this it should be the length of this inner part okay so use a micrometer one of these this will help so i can i use a really soft rubber and all i have to do is really really force this in i might use a little bit of lubricant to help me in but um this is a very soft rubber it's not super uh like hard so it will go in i've, I've used this rubber before i was going to use this one but this one it, i have to drill a bigger hole i really didn't want to drill a big hole and i was trying to keep it as tight as possible so just going to throw some soap soap and water in here and then i'm going to slide it in and i'm going to show you what it looks like all right guys so we'll be right back all right guys so this is it that's the finished product as you can see it's in there it's snug it's slightly you see it's slightly bulging over let me see oh damn this damn phone so it's looking good the inside is looking good and that's it so it's just a little there you go fix it so now you'll get proper air intake temps that's what's important and it's that simple guys it takes a drill takes the holes whatever type of holes you have that you have that will work i have a whole bunch of different ones um just got to find something that works you know the easiest way to find something that works is by measuring 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 it makes things easy all right guys one of these goes a long way and that's it and now you can get proper air intake temps you're not going to leave your sensor just dangling there risking it just falling off and then losing your air intake temp and then car is not going to be driving right so this is the right way to do it and i'm going to install it in the car right now so i can show you what it looks like and then uh that'll be it all right guys all right guys so now let me just show you real quick there it is there intake temp in the pipe very 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 secure and that's not going to pop out um if you're like if you're doing this in a boosted setup make sure you use a harder hose um not too soft of a hose because it can you know depending on how tight the tolerance it, it will get cut the, the the holes can get cut so use a harder hose if you're going boost and just try to get the tolerance as tight as you can without actually damaging the hose you know just make sure you know just take a couple attempts if you have to but that's my setup right here and you always want to make sure you have a clearance which i do have some clearance so like it won't hit the shifter the, sh uh, the shifter fork won't hit my pipe it's just rubbing up a little bit against my uh, catch can but other than that there's no problem um, i'd rather rub on my catch can a little bit than on my shifter it's just it's a, it's a big intake it's a four inch intake so space is tight but um yeah guys that's how you install a air intake temp on an intake a custom intake usually uh, if you buy an uh, uh off the shelf intake um you don't need to worry about this but not everybody is running an off the shelf intake or if you're going boost turbo a lot of people would benefit from this guys get your true air intake temps into your tune without a boost leak and you should be fine so here's one more look of how my intake setup is set up so there you go and you guys can see there's clearance i have the i have this moved all the way over so there is clearance and the only place it's hitting is just here so you can see it's just touching so if i if i move it it will create clearance but it should be all right um that's it guys so till next time all right peace